Hey guys, welcome back to the Furtado Group. I'm Ruben Furtado and we're here back at your land. And today we're gonna to be talking about one of the things that is probably the most difficult thing to work around and it's gonna be your mechanical and your plumbing. We're gonna show you how we actually got rid of a ton of bulkheads and how we actually dealt with some major engineering challenges as well. So come check it out. Doing in the Cedar Grove yeah. that you have to cover some Connection, you want to do this here or not? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Here it's going to be simple because the glass uh -huh. is going to sit right underneath the wall, right? Us will actually sit. So even though this is overhanging, right? Because um, we're going to want that. The glass is actually going to sit right in front of the stairs. The problem is, you see, I know the, 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 the beam is coming out the one. I know. So you have to go underneath the beam. Yeah. Yeah, I, I get it. Here. So the problem is not. The problem is going to be creating a bulkhead down here to basically get, drain this. Where do you prefer to have the drain? The stack. You want it on that side or do you want it here in the middle? What's okay. easier for you? Ah, yeah. It's going to drain this way, go across, and come down this wall. Is that okay? Yeah. This is the exterior wall. No problem. All right, guys. So when I got on site, I got bombarded with questions with all the trades, and I don't mind because communication is the key. There's always going to be things that are coming up. So today we actually solved some major engineering um, issues that would have created some really nasty bulkheads in this house. And we can't afford to have bulkheads because we have eight foot ceilings here. The other thing we were actually talking about is some of the plumbing. So all the plumbing coming from the second floor. When you're opening up all these walls, how are you actually going to be running plumbing from your second floor all the way to your basement to your stack. So I'm gonna show you how we did that. And then the other thing too is an architectural feature that we have here. So um, this is gonna be the new office and in this corner here, what you start seeing is already how it's being framed. This is actually gonna be um, an area where it's actually gonna look like, think of a, a, a cube and it's all gonna be done in millwork. So this is actually gonna now give us that access from the garage into a mudroom where the powder room is gonna be concealed. So really excited to show you that as, as progress starts to happen. So we're actually in the what's going to be the living room and above us is gonna be the master ensuite. And this is where you will try to avoid having bulkheads. Well, we have a double sink, a bathtub, a shower, a toilet. So we got really creative on actually using a wall-mounted toilet to actually conceal some of the, the drains to actually bring it along and across. And what we're gonna do, there has to be a bulkhead, but we want that bulkhead to look like an architectural feature. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna build out a bulkhead in this the back wall here, but then we're gonna actually build out this entire section. We're gonna build out this wall. We're gonna line it up with the staircase. And this is where we're gonna bring all our HVAC, all our plumbing. And it's gonna look again like an architectural feature because this is that now gonna define the family room and then pretty much divide it from the actual dining room. So you'll see that as progress starts to come along. But this was something, like I said, what I normally see is it's going to be a bulkhead, the bulkhead dies here, and it becomes a, a, an eyesore in any home. So always try to figure out how you can actually design around those bulkheads. And if you look just behind me, you're going to actually see a metal plate. That was actually used uh, to basically solve another major problem. Is the engineer actually designed this house and they had, you know, if you look up here at the very top, you're going to see some LVLs. Well, those LVLs, our, our, floor, joists, our, our floor joists are eight inches. And the LVLs that were actually being put in were nine and a half. That means we were gonna have to drop our entire ceiling, or we're gonna have all these bulkheads wherever we opened up these walls. So what we were able to do is we went back to the engineer and said, hey, that's not acceptable. So what he did is he actually then designed it using an eight inch LVL, and we added these metal plates. So you're gonna actually see that in this beam across, it's waffled with metal plates and it's got bolts, and that's what's gonna give us that strength and rigidity that we need to support the upstairs floor. But now we have a nice smooth ceiling, and it's actually gonna look like it was done from, as if you were building a house from the ground up, and it's not gonna look like a reno that has a bunch of bulkheads where we opened up some walls. All right, guys, so from here, we're gonna actually head over to one of the suppliers that's gonna provide us our bathroom fixtures, and we're actually gonna look at some flooring, so we're gonna head over there. Hopefully, Andrew can join us as well so we can get that stuff selected and keep this project going. What I'm looking at, were, were, these, were these selected? You'll have, you'll have most of, rarely any knots. Got it. But you might have some yeah. knots elsewhere. Right. Okay. Okay. Because you can hide them. So Look, you, you don't. You don't you want to hide it. You almost want to embrace it. Like, and by the way, if I had knots, this is what I tell the guy, right? See, and this is I always say, think of where you're putting furniture. Yeah. If you have a bed, yeah. put the pieces of yeah, knots exactly. underneath the bed. I don't mind it because mm -hmm. some people just don't want it. I like yeah. it. But like I said, if I had one knot like this, mm -hmm. this one I would probably uh, strategically put it so that it's going to go underneath the cabinet or sure. underneath furniture or something yeah. like that. Sides, 
if you no. go for dirt. Is it? Yeah. Is that, it more, the, the size is more or less the same, but this one, this one is actually a little bit more narrow. It is more narrow, right? And on one side you have a little angle there. Where this one is more angled on... Well, this one is like both sides. Is it? Yeah. All right, guys, so we're here at, at PQB. They're located at Winston Churchill and Dundas. They got a really good selection of flooring, and we actually found one that we've actually selected and we're really excited about. Um, we're actually going with this nine and a half inch wide plank. You'll see they're very long pieces. A lot of times I see renos and people are really trying to cut costs. And the one thing that's the most visible is the floors. So having these longer pieces and these wider planks really makes that house stand out. We did go with a lighter floor because our house, again, we're not, we don't have a 4,000 square foot home. It's gonna be just over 2,000 square feet. We wanna keep it light, bright, and very airy. And, and, and we spent all this time opening up walls. We, again, we wanna make it look big. So you'll notice this is gonna be the color palette that we have for our kitchen. We're gonna have a solid gray as well as we're gonna have a veneer. And this actually goes really well. This is also gonna be really easy to match our stairs to this flooring. So the other thing we were looking at is gonna be some of the washroom fixtures, so come check this out. While we were here, we actually selected two wall-mounted toilets. The reason why we're going wall-mounted, one, aesthetically, they look a lot nicer. Two, um, when you're working with a smaller space, you don't have that tank behind you, so when you're actually sitting down, it's gonna give you a lot more leg room. And one of the reasons why we really like this toilet as well, even though it's got that European styling to it, I find a lot of times these designer toilets, they're beautiful, but they're not practical. Where this one, when you actually flush it, it's in the, the entire rim actually rinses out the toilet so it doesn't even leave any nasty embarrassing stains. Well, one of the last reasons why we did the wall mounted toilet is so that when we're actually turning around and draining this toilet, we're actually doing it through the wall trusses and getting a natural slope and avoiding a bulkhead and the lower level, which is gonna be our main floor. Again, we did two toilets. One's gonna be in the master ensuite, one in the powder room. The powder room is the one that obviously is in the common area where everybody sees that's really important. All the other toilets in the house, pretty much in the other bedrooms and downstairs in the basement are gonna be standard toilets. The key thing in a reno project is that what really stands out where people should be spending the money is gonna be in the kitchen, the flooring, and also the ensuite. All too often on the ensuite, people are going very inexpensive in a tub. They're going with more with an acrylic tub. I think if you really want to differentiate the house and the type of fit and finish as an overall, is spend a little bit more money on the tub. A tub like this is actually going to be a solid tub. It's going to be made out of a comp. This one here is made out of a composite of marble and quartz. Um, you pick this up, it's like super heavy. A bunch of guys have to carry this in. But again, it's going to give it a, a completely different look and feel and level of fit and finish, really giving that wow factor in the ensuite. So that's the tub that we went with and I can't wait to see it actually in the house. So that's it for today. If you guys are gonna come down here and check out some of the merchandise uh, over at PQB, make sure to ask for Michael. Until next time, take care. Thank you.